You know there's a bigger bunker around there that's mostly covered with earth with the generators in. But you see, I'd say we've got barbed wire fences. There's something down there which I suspect is something to do with the farm, but I, I do remember this place is pure, like a few feet of reinforced concrete. So we're going to look over here. Um, we suspect it's over there. Uh, they did come over to investigate. Very curious. Three months ago. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, further on, we're going to go over here and investigate and route through. Hopefully, we can get the farmers chasing us with shotguns or anything. So, <laughs> has been known. So, uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Hi, here we are on the top of Helsby Hill, and we've, here we've got a, a Cold War fortification. It's part of fort, outer fortification. And you see the step on it, this was built about mid 50s, late 50s. It's still bloody solid. Still got the maker's name of the, the armoured door. Glenwood Brick House Steel Fabricators. As I say, this is something to do with the water supply and the air supply. We know this because we've got these vents here, which are obviously to go into the air filtration system. So apparently this bunker, when, when we get to it later, this bunker had two huge generators and a few months supply of water to ration, etc. And somewhere around here there was or is a giant communications tower and it was it was used decades as a civil defense defense uh, or communications bunker but as you see if you look at this I mean, it's, 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 obviously it's not designed to take a direct blast but we're still looking at like nine inch eight nine inches of concrete and not this is this would have had a seal around it a lot you know, a rubber seal around it at one stage to keep the contaminated air out very clever that's been lost years ago we haven't got a drain here but it's quite solid isn't it um downstairs um, downstairs, there's a, there's a yeah, there's there's a small room um, with room for one person, and the, the old steel bedspread is still there from the 1950s, old rusted to hell. So that must have been made pretty well, but it's quite fascinating. It's a bit of rubbish down there, but uh, to see, we're going on shortly because we know for a fact there's a much larger bunker here, which is semi covered in earth, and that's the, well, you know, that's where all the work went on generators to water the uh, carbon filtration of the air supply but um there's actually a mention on the tv about this because this was like top secret until uh, like the end of the cold war but as you see here this is completely separate from the shaft the multiple air air inlets so that you know even if one of them would get blocks there'd always be a backup what's this here hmm oh, i don't know what that is exactly so, okay. oh so that'll be a for winching, I think. A winching. Maybe someone could comment on the that, comments yeah. and tell us. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't appear to move. If anyone but... knows what that is, can you just comment and let us know what it is? It's, it's solid. Held up, held down by three bolts. It could have been rotated at some stage. I can't see a seam. Anyway. Could have so, had a rope around it. Yeah, yeah, it could be. I was using protection for something. I don't know. But you can see this clearly. See, it's quite clever where the neoprene seal has gone to make it airtight. Isn't that clever? Obviously, lost years ago. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, come on, yeah, come on, mate. This is my buddy here. Yeah. We're with two buddies. Are you coming down? Uh, well, then you go down, I'll say. Yeah. I'll do the talk about it. Yeah. Nazi shit. Nazi shit. Ah. Still Nazi shit. Can't see it. It's a bit dark in here and the light's not really working the best. But as we get down here, we've got like a old school sort of um, bed, like cast iron bed. It's even got the headboard for the. You know what? We should pull this up just to see what it is. And there's a door here which is really solid with a looking glass through, like a sort of. You can see who's coming. The door's really got a handle on it, still a silver handle. You can't really see it because of the dark. And it's got a keyhole, it's sort of locked. It's also got some type of hooks on it as well. Oh, you can see these here. Yeah. So you can see the keyhole. That's the deadlock there. You've got the deadlock on the door. It's like an old fashioned it's door. The door as well. Two dead, two deadlocks. The handle. So there's two deadlocks on this door. And then we come down here to the door, it's got like a hole in it. So in the bunker, it's just basically two. Two rooms that you can't really see. It's got a bit of graffiti on there, some wirings there still. Also, we found this fuse box in here. So this must be from the 50s or maybe 60s. I'll take it up so we can have a proper look. So we've got this with the wires. Sort of like it uh, looks like a fuse box or something. Must have been like the 
part of the generator. But just two small rooms. Oh, the door's still here, intact on, on the, um, still on the hinges. Hey, there's a door on the hinges still here. It looks very good, that look at the door. Old school door. Wonder if you can like shut it. It's only a cupboard. That door's solid. Wow, there's a bucket. That must be old. An old school bucket. What's that? A bucket. Huh. Proper old school though. And the door's still on here. You just can't shut it. But anyway, this is the shaft and Dave will explain everything. So this was the bunker that we climbed into. Hi, I was just talking to my colleagues. Uh, the reason this bunker was built for communications, emergency communications after the events of a nuclear hit. It's quite a long way from Liverpool, about 15 miles, and also quite a long, even further from Manchester. The thing you've got to remember is, at first, kind of post-war, 50s, uh, the only delivery system possible was by aircraft. So we had like, the American Stratoforcers, we had the, Amer uh, the beautiful British Vulcan, which I'm sorry to see going, uh, to deliver them to Moscow, Stalingrad and what have you. But as time marked, and they would carry like two or three big nuclear bombs to take out Moscow. Uh, as time marched on, of course, the, and it was a suicide mission, by the way. You couldn't get away from the blast fast enough at 600 mile an hour to survive. So it was always, always a suicide mission to the pilots near us. Um, as time marched on, we got into the 60s, of course, electronics started taking over. And um, obviously, missiles came into the road. They suddenly realised that without risking pilots' lives, they could deliver these deadly payloads uh, with missile much more efficiently and faster. So, like, uh, you know, obviously, the delivery system using the plane became outdated. Like, sadly, our, our beautiful Vulcan bomber, which I've seen flying, the decommissioned now, uh, very noisy, beautiful aircraft, uh, no longer became viable because you could get the missile there in half the time and without risk, cheaper and without risking all these aircrew. But at the time, we've got to realise like Great Britain was truly great at this time. We had a massive, massive independent nuclear arsenal. We had V bombers all over the place. And my own father used to work in the army, uh, maintaining stuff. So although we're in recession now, we may not be still that great. We're very proud of our past military heritage. And I think a lot of us hope it will continue.